so that could be Florian Doster. Uh, he's a professor at the Institute of Geo Energy Engineering at the Harriet Watt University. And um, at this um, institute, they use MRST as part of their education. So Florian is going to talk to us about MRST in education, learning CO2 storage, multiphase flow, and programming from scratch. So Florian, the screen is yours. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Oystein. <laughs> I have a colleague who is uh, from uh, Lewis and Harris uh, with a Gaelic name called Oystein, and he just texted me. So uh, that Oystein, uh, apologies for that. Um, yeah, thank you for organizing uh, this uh, uh, MRST conference, um, uh, Francesca Oystein and uh, Knut Andreas. And yeah, also a big thank you to the whole team um, for developing um, MRST. So I, I dare to say that uh, I, I sort of followed MRST almost from the uh, first moments, like with the uh, the first paper um, by Arnes Gimse and uh, Knut, uh, Knut Andreas on introduction to uh, numerical methods in porous media flow. Uh, using MATLAB, uh, that's the way how I learned the numerics of uh, multi-phase flow in porous media uh, during my PhD. And then I was following sort of um, MRST throughout my career. Uh, had During my PhD, I developed a code from scratch. I, I wanted to expand on that during my postdoc time. Then I discovered that the grid structure of MRST is much more elegant than what I've coded up. So I started using the grid structure for that. And then um, uh, sort of when I started uh, my uh, career at Harriet Watt as an academic and I had less and less time of uh, coding myself, I, I sort of abandoned um, the, the, the parallel development and uh, decided that um, it's just so much uh, more elegant, uh, better, and uh, uh, whatnot uh, to just follow MRST and start developing um, modules within MRST. So we use uh, MRST a lot in our research. But um, what I want to talk today about, and uh, in particular following the nice introduction from Knut Andreas right now uh, with the focus on um, uh, MRST being a research tool, I want to highlight that it's actually uh, more than that, and it's also a, perfe a perfect educational tool. And um, so that's what I want to talk about today. And um, it's uh, worked um, together with Ahmed El Shaikh, my colleague, um, and he is actually still using this paper that I mentioned. Uh, for teaching his PhD students uh, to really have like this concise uh, uh, simulator with a few lines of MATLAB. Uh, so um, while MRST is growing, um, the origin is, uh, is still very useful. So then um, let me get uh, first give a brief in, uh, overview of how we use MRST uh, at, um, at Harriet Watt University. And uh, the, uh, the slides uh, or the presentation is recorded. And when I learned that, I uh, decided to just grab um, a, a lot of uh, just uh, text on uh, individual slides so that, uh, so that I don't have to go through uh, everything in detail. But you can uh, like pause when you're looking at it later and follow up should there anything uh, be of interest for you. So as I said, we are developing uh, modules uh, currently mostly around like uh, uh, aspects of uh, fracture representations, uh, various levels of complexities there, a little bit coupling uh, to geomechanics also in uh, the context of uh, fractures. And we are also using it heavily uh, within projects, both one-to-one uh, uh, -one, uh, projects with um, companies, but also um, consortium projects with uh, 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 research council uh, as uh, councils as funders. 
Um, we contributed to the list, uh, impressive list of uh, papers. And what I've counted is um, 23 in between the various groups of uh, at Harriet Watt uh, that we've published, but um, I might have missed uh, some of them uh, there. So I might actually go back to, to the um, list uh, that uh, you at Sintef are um, following up on that. And then now coming more to the education. So we've actually started using um, MRST in various courses. I'd like to highlight um, um, uh, the one uh, introduction to reservoir simulation at the National Institutes of Mathematics in uh, Ghana. So um, the beauty of MRST here is like, a MATLAB license and uh, or like even an Octave license for free is affordable. And um, in particular in developing countries where uh, it, like the, the typical reservoir simulation uh, licenses are like just out of reach for universities, uh, uh, this is of, of a particular help. And um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, what I wanted to say uh, here. And then we've also had, um, I counted now like seven PhD theses in, in the Institute uh, that uh, were contributing to modules and um, using heavily uh, MRST. And um, yeah, there, there is also a, a research contributions and tomorrow, um, Leslie uh, Gutierrez will present a poster. She is a PhD student. Christine Meyer uh, present a poster. She was um, a PhD student and uh, uh, later on also a postdoctoral fellow, but is now in Brazil. And Hussein Faseli, also a former postdoc uh, in my group and um, now moving to Norway and uh, presenting uh, their work on uh, uh, current research. But as I said, today I want to go into um, using MRST in education. And uh, the, the context in which um, we uh, uh, use it uh, 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 most intensively is a new uh, uh, master on subsurface energy systems that goes beyond the uh, petroleum engineering and also covers geothermal energy, carbon uh, uh, sequestration, natural gas, and large-scale energy gas storage. And the format of that uh, um, program is in semester one, we go through uh, the different technologies, and then only in semester two, we will set the foundations, the physical and um, uh, uh, geophysical uh, foundations of that. And then we'll finish with a, a group project and an individual project. So now setting a bit the context. So it's a master program in the uh, UK. And so a master in the UK only lasts for one year. So um, time is uh, very precious and we carefully need to select uh, uh, what we teach as we, uh, in particular, in such an interdisciplinary uh, program, uh, like there, there are a lot of chefs uh, who, uh, who want to contribute and uh, all consider their particular discipline uh, the most important. And I don't absolutely don't want to exclude myself uh, uh, there from that. Then if we're looking at the MSc in petroleum engineering, we have well-established workflows and software. We have well-established job descriptions. So at the end, uh, our students in the traditional uh, petroleum engineering degree um, are very eager to uh, just be trained on Eclipse and um, so, so that they can join a team uh, in, a, uh, in an oil and gas company and uh, uh, perform the asset management there. While when we're looking now at this subsurface energy system, so we, we have very new technologies or sort of new technologies. So we neither have established workflows nor software. And we also don't have uh, established job descriptions. So that's an opportunity because we, uh, the, the, the students really um, are more eager to, to learn uh, general principles 
uh, rather than uh, being uh, trained on a, a very a specific software that might not be useful in a, a for instance, geothermal setting or financially out of reach. And uh, the target students in this program is also uh, covering a wide range of expertise from geologists to engineers, physicists, as well as uh, professionals out of the oil and gas industry that want to uh, uh, be ready for the energy transition. And then last but not least, we are also facing a, a digitalization and a big data um, as buzzwords. So everyone needs to know a little bit of coding. And so in this setting, we decided to make the MATLAB Reservoir Simulation Toolbox uh, uh, an important ingredient in this um, uh, program. So it's based on MATLAB, as I said, widely available and used easy programming language, integrated development environment that uh, Knut Andreas uh, emphasized also a lot in his talk. And um, we have a really easy uh, possibility of developing graphical user interfaces, which is very helpful when we're talking, uh, when we're trying to educate uh, students that do not have a, a mathematical or a, a numerical coding uh, background. And so in that setting, uh, we, we very much enjoy the graphical user interfaces from CO2 lab. And it's also not limited to oil and gas in particular with the rapid prototyping, but we are seeing their uh, geothermal um, uh, modules are now developed and um, the CO2 lab is, um, has been around uh, for, for quite some time uh, and um, it's uh, easily expandable uh, because it's a research open source code and so so the beauty there is that we really have um, uh, we can take it as a just click button uh, exercise but we also can dive all in uh, and uh, uh, go into solver development and that's all at the fingertips for the students and um, I have to uh, really like thank um, uh, Knut Andreas and the team. Uh, I cannot thank them enough for for also the excellent documentation at any level that I can uh, that we can provide to the students. So, we, and the last reason why we included MRST in the uh, in the program is ourselves we use it heavily in research. So in this program, when do students encounter MRST? So in the first week, actually two days from now, before they had any class, we'll give them a brief introduction to reservoir simulation so that they uh, get primed uh, uh, for the technologies that they'll face in, um, in semester one. And then in the second semester, we come back in the uh, fluid mechanics, reactive transport and heat flow course where they can then refine with the help of MRST the um, concepts of multi-phase flow. And then uh, in the summer, uh, they'll do an integrated group project where they develop essentially a CO2 storage site. And in the uh, remainder of the time today, I just want to briefly go through these uh, three items and how uh, the students uh, encounter MRST there. And uh, so first in the first week, what do the students need to get going? Well, first, obviously they need a computer. Luckily, most of uh, them have one. And if not, we have computer labs. MATLAB, that's available through the campus license and uh, really helpful in COVID time. So we don't need to have the, the expensive license. Uh, so, uh, or like uh, we can't afford to have Eclipse in, uh, uh, hand out to students to run on their laptops. And so then MRST, that's free to download. And then uh, launch MRST, uh, uh, Knut Andreas just uh, taught us that. And uh, I, I, I would claim that can be perfectly taught in a slide. And then uh, we just need uh, uh, the students to launch the graphical user interface of CO2 lab. And uh, I would really like to thank Odd Anderson for, for the video clips. So um, uh, job done, uh, I can just uh, point them to uh, those uh, video clips. And then we go through like roughly half an hour, uh, mostly discussions on what is simulation, why do we simulate, 
why do we need reservoir simulation in geoenergy engineering and then also a bit on what is the model and with that um, uh, students are then ready to go so they open the graphical user interface and uh, that is then what they encounter with a geological model here and uh, the possibility of defining boundary conditions to allocate wells and, and to uh, decide on how long they want to look at things. And with that, um, actually, they already get uh, like hands on experience on what is a reservoir model. So uh, they can uh, explore the top sea location of a reservoir, they can look at the depth. Uh, lateral position, typical sizes of reservoirs, um, and different geological features that lead to different boundaries uh, conditions, and uh, how to place wells, and um, uh, can learn about uh, the, the structural traps already uh, in uh, CO2 storage. And uh, they can also get already get a, a flavor on uh, the magnitudes of typical injection rates that we uh, uh, are expecting in a CO2 storage operation. And with that, quickly, we task the students to find out what happens in a reservoir when CO2 is injected and after injection, what parameters can the operator control, what parameters cannot be controlled by the operator, and uh, what parameters increase and reduce links. And that uh, nicely sets then uh, the scene to, to link to the whole education of the program. What forms a reservoir? That is reservoir characterization. Reservoir characterization. Bigger picture of CO2 storage. So we have a whole uh, course on gas storage. How do we model fluid flow? In other words, how, how does the simulator know where the CO2 migrates that then leads to the fluid mechanics uh, course? Why do we care about pressure uh, buildup uh, linking to geomechanics? How do we get the characteristics that form geological model? Uh, um, so this is then uh, geophysics. And uh, then it also forms a platform for discussions on uh, what makes a, a storage site economical, what, are, uh, uh, what would an operator, uh, what would uh, a legislator uh, and uh, 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 a licensing body uh, require, and uh, what are associated risks. So that's... Um, pretty much a, a four hour uh, quick introduction that we do. And um, so far uh, students been really happy with uh, getting such a um, like quick and uh, trajectory into uh, the, the concept of uh, CO2 storage and reservoir simulation. Then in the second semester, uh, we uh, teach fluid mechanics, reactive transport and heat flow. And so by then, the uh, students have learned an overview of technologies and um, uh, basics of uh, 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 multi-phase flow and uh, porous media and so on and so forth. And um, now with, uh, with a reservoir uh, simulator, we can um, uh, 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 give the students the opportunity to, to, to get hands-on experience and explore uh, physical um, concepts and how they change the uh, uh, flow dynamics. And again, um, without actually having uh, uh, requiring uh, a, a big introduction into a, a complex uh, um, simulator because we can just provide them with scripts and graphical user interfaces. So uh, we let them explore the shock velocity, impact of viscosity, gravity, and capillary forces, and uh, bloom dynamics around a CO2 injection well, impact of grid resolution, and um, by um, asking them to operate with scripts, uh, that we provide them, they also start to get a flavor on how programming looks like. So how do we do that? Uh, really like, um, I, I'm showing the screenshots here just to highlight how um, uh, quick and simple uh, uh, or like how uh, 
hands on, uh, we can actually guide the, uh, the students with a few steps into uh, being able uh, to use that. So uh, we see here on the left, like really uh, double click, like we instruct double click on this uh, script file that you've been provided and uh, run uh, the script uh, by clicking on the play button. And then uh, here we can then talk over the script basic programming concepts. But then uh, with uh, the, uh, the, the figures uh, being produced uh, from uh, that script, we can then also let the students like forget about uh, again about all these uh, programming details and focus on like how the bottom hole pressure evolves with the nice um, uh, default um, uh, well fewer um, of MRST and how, how the saturation uh, here uh, evolves in a Buckley labyrinth problem and so on. And um, yeah, that, uh, here is just two snapshots of, from uh, student reports, how they um, investigate then uh, the plume dynamics uh, around uh, uh, in a checker well, for instance. And then so last, uh, I see I have four minutes left, um, quickly going through. Uh, the group project, which is uh, sort of the core of, uh, of the program, where we bring all uh, the elements together. And the overall aim here is to evaluate in a team setting the storage potential uh, uh, of uh, one megaton of CO2 per year for 30 years in a specific storage site. And um, uh, they uh, get, uh, so the objective is that uh, they estimate the CO2 storage capacity based on provided data um, uh, with a limited number of CO2 injection plants, assess the risk associated with CO2 injection given the uncertainties in the data, uh, design a site monitoring plan, including corrective measures and incorporate environmental health and safety consideration. And so the data set that they get is they get the top structure map, wireline logs, core images, and seismic uh, cross section of a uh, um, uh, uh, potential CO2 storage site in Norway. And uh, some of you uh, might immediately recognize that. And I have to admit the students were also quite uh, quick in finding uh, the originals. But um, uh, uh, the original reports on that, but uh, that uh, didn't hamper the, uh, the student experience. And so then digitalization and big data. Um, so uh, this is the, the, the um, small like uh, uh, inconvenience, I'd say, so that we are starting here to um, operate not based, uh, exclusively based in MATLAB, but we are uh, matching it with Python for various reasons. Uh, I have that lower on in the slide. So um, all data handling could be obviously carried out in MATLAB, but um, Python today is, uh, is a, a bit more popular, I dare to say. Uh, uh, MATLAB and Python are similar and um, also uh, uh, the uh, uh, Ahmed El Shaikh, who is uh, um, leading this course, uh, is uh, ha uh, heavily using uh, Python rather than MATLAB. And I think in the geoenergy and geoscience um, webinar series, uh, when Knut Andreas presented, he also admitted that maybe if uh, you would develop today from scratch, um, you might choose Python instead. So. Geological models are then built within, uh, based on these, uh, uh, on the seismic horizons, well information and so on, and then put into a 3D eclipse corner point grid that can then be uh, read uh, by a CO2 lab. And therefore we slightly modified the graphical user interface so that they are then able uh, to load the data uh, that they've generated and are also, uh, having a more physical parameters uh, uh, to modify as a, an uncertainty. And with that, the students then are able to um, actually propose a field management, again, a plan for, for a storage site without actually really having had to dig deep into a reservoir simulation. With that, I'd like to close. So I've 
quickly uh, presented MRST related activities at Harriet Watt. Brief overview of the uh, subsurface energy sub uh, systems uh, master and how MRST can serve as a, a great educational tool and how it features in, uh, in this uh, program to teach CO2 storage reservoir simulation, multi-phase flow concept and uh, development of a CO2 storage project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk, Florian. Uh, it's very rewarding, I think, for us to see how the software is being used uh, in education uh, and also for master students who are uh, using this as their tool to understand the flow in forest media and not just uh, people at the PhD and postdoc level who use it for very advanced research. So very nice talk and uh, thank you very much. Um, I think in the interest of time, we should uh, leave questions for Zulip. So uh, you can ask questions to Florian and his talk in the Zulip stream, which is called TU2, uh, and then uh, the first few letters of his uh, title. And that you can do throughout the symposium. So I hope, Florian, that you are able to uh, monitor that a little bit and answer the I, questions I when they appear. Thank you very much.